Do you ever wonder how pros can completely avoid distortion on any part they're welding or any project they're working on? Avoiding distortion is super key when welding any sort of part or welding whatever project you're working on. A lot of people overlook the distortion part of welding and this just sets you apart when you know how to avoid distortion on any project you're working on. So if you want to learn some techniques that the pro guys use to keep your parts straight, square, and level after you get them welding it, you came to the right place, so let's get right into it. So what are these techniques that you can use? So this first one is pre-bending or pre-loading. So in general, with weld distortion, your part will always pull towards the weld. So with pre-bending, you're bending the metal the opposite direction of the way the weld is going to pull it to kind of compensate for the amount that weld is going to pull and distort your material. So the next technique here is bracing. You can see here as an example, to keep these two pieces from moving while I'm welding them, I have them tacked to my table to brace them and lock them in place to minimize the movement of them. Now I don't use this method as often because in general, like when you cut those tacks to take that bracing piece out, once you get done welding it, your piece has a tendency to spring up and pull because of that weld shrinkage. So I don't really tend to use this one as often by itself at least, I usually try to pair it with like another technique and as like an additional thing to use to help reduce distortion. So the next technique is what I call over tacking. I'm probably not the best term for it, but that's just what I call it. For the over tacking technique, you can see how I have these two pieces tacked together here over 90. And then once it's welded, the weld will actually pull this exactly to square. So this is kind of like pre-bending in a way because you're kind of compensating for the amount that weld is going to shrink and pull your part. And both those techniques really take a lot of time to master because when you're first starting out, you're pretty much just flat out guessing how much this weld is going to pull your part. So it really helps to have a practice piece to figure out how much it's going to warp before you weld on your actual piece. So for example, let's say you have a practice part that you can easily scrap if you need to. Just weld that piece out and then you can see how much it pulls. Let's say it pulls like an eighth inch out of square. Then it's that eighth inch is how much you need to pre-bend it or over tack it to then account for that shrinkage. And then I'll pull it right exactly to that square 90 level, whatever you're going for. But in a lot of situations, you don't have that extra part to practice on to see how much is going to warp your project. So it really comes down to experience and doing this a lot and just kind of getting the feel for and paying attention on how much things pull when you weld it. Now the next one here is weld backing. So this one is super helpful when welding anything stainless because stainless pulls like crazy and the more heat you put into it, the more it's going to warp your part. So what you need is like a sponge to soak out that heat when you're welding. So materials like brass and aluminum, they have the ability to soak in that heat from your weld. So what I like to do is grab a nice thick piece of aluminum or brass and stick it underneath your piece that you're going to be welding. Let's say it's like a T-joint or a butt joint or something like that. If you put that piece of aluminum underneath it, that'll soak in that heat from your welding and that'll really minimize distortion. And also for thinner material, this is super handy because when you're running like butt joints like that, you tend to burn through. And when you have like a backing like that, you won't get that sugaring or oxidation when you burn through on a stainless because you have that backing to seal it off from the atmosphere. For the weld backing technique, I have a quarter inch piece of aluminum under half of this butt joint and then clamped. And the other half, I have no backing and not clamped. And once I welded this, you can see right here the difference it makes. The front half is all warped and pulled like crazy where it was just out in the open. And the back half where I had it backed with aluminum and clamped down, that's all nice and flat. And when I welded this, I welded it hotter to burn through. So when you flip this over, you can see where the aluminum backing was compared to where it wasn't. So the aluminum almost acts like a purge to keep your welds from getting sugared and oxidized. So if you do a lot of stainless work, Thick pieces of aluminum or brass are your absolute best friends and can help you out a ton with minimizing distortion. Now the number one thing when trying to avoid distortion is material prep. So for example, if you have like big gaps on your joint that you're going to be welding, it basically gives your weld even more leverage to pull your part 
out of square or level. And let's say your material is like dirty and it has like coatings on it. You actually have to run hotter to burn that stuff out. And when you run hotter like that, it really tends to warp your parts even more because of the more heat input. So material prep is so key. And if you just take that extra five, 10 minutes to make sure your gaps are nice and tight and your material is nice and clean, that goes a long way with avoiding distortion. So that's how you use these techniques to your advantage in certain situations like that. But there is a lot of scenarios out there and a lot of projects out there that you really can't use any of those pre-weld techniques that I just went over. And you have to solely rely on your welding techniques. As, as you're welding it, you have to really weld it a certain way to avoid distortion. And I'll be going over all those techniques in the next video, so make sure to stick around. So as always, if you have any questions on any part of this video or anything I should go into more detail about, drop that in the comments below. And with that being said, hope you liked the video and we'll see you in the next one.